The two things that I know are true after testing this monitor, it is the best competitive monitor I've ever played on, and I'm not going to be keeping it. Let me explain why. For those of you who are unfamiliar, this is Samsung's newest 500Hz monitor, the G60SF, their newest QD OLED panel, 27-inch, 500Hz, 1440p. And this monitor is an absolute beast. Starting off with the build quality, I think it has one of the nicest rear monitors I've seen in a long time. In general, I've always preferred Samsung's branding overall. One thing Samsung does does do that's different than everybody is their matte coating. I'm always going to pick glossy, but I honestly didn't even notice it that much using this monitor. But I am really excited to try Asus's new true black glossy coating. Just from some of the pictures I've seen online, it seems insane. And the next biggest selling point about this monitor is its refresh rate. Coming in at 500 hertz, this is the perfect competitive monitor for some of the staple games like Valorant, Counter Strike, Overwatch. Anything that can run at 500 hertz will be a better experience on this monitor. It goes without saying, though, that if you don't play games, that run at 500 hertz or your computer can't push 500 hertz this might not be the best monitor for you it might be better to go with an alternative that's 360 hertz and maybe upgrade your pc in my personal opinion i think 360 hertz is perfect for those who want to blend a very competitive but still want to be able to remain within their budgets more refresh rate is always going to be better and i do notice a pretty big difference between this and 360 hertz for very specific gaming scenarios the way I kind of explained it in my Wooting review has somewhat of a similar vibe to how I feel about refresh rate. You can definitely still play just as well on a lower refresh rate monitor, but at these high refresh rates, it just feels like I have to think less. When taking reaction time tests, I can average 137 to 142 pretty frequently, and that's with minimal focus. Whereas if I was trying to do the same thing on a 240 hertz or a 360 hertz OLED monitor, I would have to just focus in a little more. It allows me to be more at ease when I'm playing. And that's the same thing I noticed when I was using the wooting keyboard and i think that's a general theme for all these very high-end competitive peripherals is they won't make you a good player but if you're a good player i think you can really take advantage of them now reviews have been coming out for this monitor for a while but i really wanted to put it through its paces before i dropped any type of review i recently started playing counter-strike 2 again i hadn't played a lot of cs2 since its release i ended up deciding to grind face it with this monitor i didn't know my rank reset when we moved to counter-strike 2 so i was reset back to level 4. i was able to grind up to 2100 elo and only 60 matches using this monitor and to be completely honest with you it was so enjoyable just end-to-end -end latency overall feeling it was perfect even though i don't always play competitive games for me i think it's always going to be a must to have one of the fastest monitors but when i eventually do play those competitive games they are just so much more enjoyable on a monitor like this personally i think the video editing on this is great despite oled burn-in and other factors such as the rgb layout it might not be the perfect solution for work-related tasks but i find find it very enjoyable on this monitor. I also recently switched off the 32 inch 4K OLED monitor. I ended up selling mine because 32 inches is incredibly large for a 25 inch desk. I think going forward, my recommendation is gonna be your desk has to be at least 30 inches if you really wanna enjoy 32 inch. I do feel very immersed, but it honestly sometimes feels overwhelming to have such a big monitor so close up. And usually I was pushing that monitor off the edge of the desk, so it wasn't even that close. And going forward with my specific desk, I'm gonna be using a 27 inch monitor. Now clearly after all of this praise, you might be wondering why I'm not keeping the monitor. And the truth is this new QD OLED is great. Despite all that, there's two reasons why I wouldn't buy this specific monitor. First one is it's DisplayPort 1.4. If you have a graphics card that's DisplayPort 1.4, this might not be a point for you. The major issue people have is that if it isn't DisplayPort 2.1, you're using display stream compression over the cables to transfer the data. From my testing, which has not been very scientific, I do not notice a difference between using DS and not. That being said, at these crazy price points, you might as well have a monitor that has a 2.1 display port. And I know that they're slated to be coming out soon. They'll be this same exact monitor with a couple more features and display port 2.1. So I would just wait and spend the extra hundred dollars or whatever it might be just to get that. Which actually brings me to a point I forgot to mention earlier, price. The Samsung monitor at the time I purchased it was a thousand. Currently, I do see a sale on their website where it's going for 850. And I know the display port 1.4 version is actually going for 750 from MSI, so that might be my personal recommendation. And the other reason is the release of Asus's new 540Hz monitor. So I've just seen teases. I've been honestly Googling every other day to see if the monitor has any release information. That new monitor is gonna be tandem WOLED. There's a lot of great coverage on this technology, but from my understanding, it'll be brighter, have better color volume, and be much better when it comes to mitigating shadows. As well, it'll have Asus's true black glossy WOLED tech. I'm not a massive fan of Asus, but 
but this really kind of blows the W OLED versus QD OLED out of the water. From my understanding, this should be the new standard for OLED tech. And what I think is one of the weirdest things is it'll have a 720 Hertz mode at 720p, which sounds very overkill, but I'm just so excited to try it. I really don't think that'll work for a lot of games, but I know a game like Counter-Strike, I grew up playing on 720p. So having that extra refresh rate might just be game changing. I know people are always gonna say, why do we need more refresh rate? We have 360, we have 500, but I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with a paper that Blurbusters wrote. I'll leave a link to it in the description, but it basically explains that 1000 Hertz is the long-term goal for monitors. At that point, the perceived motion blur should be non-existent. And I don't expect monitors to be slowing down on refresh rate till we hit that thousand Hertz mark, at which point the tech for computers and the tech for the quality of these monitors is gonna be going up. We're just gonna have to wait and see. Whenever that 720 Hertz monitor comes out though, you can guarantee I'm gonna be testing that completely. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys have any questions, I usually respond to most of the comments and I try to give you in-depth information as much as I can. And I really appreciate you for watching.